Lee and Tim, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy. How have you two been since our uh, conversation last year? We've been good. Has it been a year? When when did we do this last? I think it was maybe early summer that we did this, Ryan. Yeah. It feels like it might have been 2020. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, <laughs> That's true. It may have been longer than last year. That's I yeah, think I 2020, it. 2021 is just one giant long year. No question. Yeah. Pain 100%. and pandemic. <laughs> I've lost all sense of time and space. Like it's yeah. 2037 in February, right? <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's the year we're living right now. I've got no Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. <laughs> it might as, might as well be. Exactly. You know, it's funny you mentioned that too. Uh, for some unknown reason, I needed some white noise the other day. Well, like I normally need white noise. And then I was, so for that, I put in Terminator Salvation. <laughs> And the year where there that's that takes place in the movie is 2018. It was like, <laughs> oh my gosh! Wait, so do you use Terminator Salvation as white noise, like in a bad way or in a good way? Like, do you enjoy Terminator Salvation and you um, like comforting to have in the background? <laughs> I wouldn't say comforting. It, it's honestly been so long since I've seen it. And I was just like, you know what? Let me just put it on. And I, I'm not going to lie. I turned it off about 30 minutes in. And then I think I put on Friends or The Office like I normally do. <laughs> nice to meet me. The those, things are, the spectrum. those things are easy to watch. For me, it's Grey's Anatomy. I just put oh. Grey's Anatomy on. And I, don't, I can dip in and out without actually watching it. Right, right. That's how yeah. Ryan and I are with Entourage as well. I'll just pick a random and season right. in a random episode and then just go. I do yeah. Disney. I do Disney Plus, Marvel movies. So like every night when I get ready to go to bed, we sleep with the TV on. I will yeah. pick one of the one of the movies, one of the Marvel movies, and put it on. And because yeah, you know okay. you're never you're never gonna wake up. So when you do like TV, like if you have it on like FX or TNT or whatever, you could wake up at like four o'clock in the morning, and there could be like a s scary movie happening, like some sort of suspense or thriller. At least I know what I'm getting, and I'm not gonna wake up and be terrified so that's See, that's the rationale there superhero movies for me are not white noise because i get sucked in and i want to watch it and i, I like whatever you know, else i'm doing falls to the last wayside night because i'm, I'm last, watching a superhero movie last night i put black panther on i was like man i haven't seen this in a couple months like let me go ahead and <laughs> got me next thing i know killmonger's there you know what i mean like he's in wakanda it's like oh man i i messed this thing up let me go ahead and put something else on so yeah i, I agree <laughs> ryan i've got a question for you yeah so you have the you have the the movies playing in the background while you sleep D does that infiltrate your dreams like do you dream about being in wakanda when you got black panther on while you're sleeping <laughs> i'm gonna tell you tim you have opened a whole uh whole can of worms here <laughs> I am not a good sleeper to begin with. I am a very light sleeper. So what I would say is, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I keep it low. You know what I mean? So you can only, you can only really hear the dialogue if you try to, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll say no. I'm a light sleeper though, in general. And uh, my dreams is another, is, is an entirely different <laughs> episode. So I've had plenty of weird dreams before. Okay, that was fast. I am the spirit of the forest. I need some medical professionals in for that for that episode. <laughs> I myself, I used to fall asleep with the TV on. Now I'm straight thunderstorm sounds. It's, I just love oh, it. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, um, you know, last year, as, as we were obviously mm. following you on social media, you guys got to go to a lot of really cool yes. events, red carpets, things yeah. like that. What are just a few that just really stand out to you? And, you know, how does it feel being invited to, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff? I'm sure it's got to be awesome. I mean, being like to, uh, to us, the foremost like pop culture experts in Australia. So, you know, what is that like? I mean, Tim probably has a different experience than I do by now because I've been doing this for such a long time. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to minimize the experience. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. But <laughs> Old after that, uh, yeah, you know. after after about after about ten years, it's like, oh, I'd really love to just stay in with a cup of tea. I don't really want to go out <laughs> tonight. <laughs> but I'm sure Tim has a different experience. Oh, I come in hot to every single one. So excited! 
<laughs> like honestly, I pinch myself and I'm like, hold on a minute. We're at the Sydney premiere of No Time to Die, the latest James Bond. There's an Aston Martin there. They're serving Bollinger. There's mm. a live orchestra playing all the Bond themes over the years at this fabulous, you know, Hoyts yeah. venue in, in Sydney. Just awesome. I mean, that yeah. that was probably one of the the best ones we went to last year because it was such an event and we were so yeah. anticipated of that film. Yeah, I will say that one did blow my mind. It was an incredible event. That beautiful orchestra playing all of the Bond themes. Like we just stood there and we were like, we have to go in, but I just want to stand yeah. out here and listen <laughs> we were to quite all late. the Bond we were quite late. We were quite late going into the screening because we were like, well, we didn't miss any of the film, let me just say. No. Absolutely we not. Didn't, but we, did. we didn't miss any of the champagne either, I'll tell you that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> A Bollinger, hello. I <laughs> <laughs> know, right? Um, one of my favourites last year actually was being the Ricardos because Nicole Kidman was actually there. Taika Waititi was there. Wow. Rita Ora, um, Keith Urban, obviously, being Nicole Kidman's husband. Mm. It was it was quite an event, that one. And and they had um, they had music playing beforehand. We actually did a live, live Insta feed from there, didn't we? Yeah, our first Insta live. Maybe our last. No, I think we did yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> With varying success, yeah. Yeah, they had a Cuban band playing on the stage yes. before the screening started. And Angela oh. Bishop is a journalist in Australia and mm-hmm. she interviewed Nicole Kidman before the screening about her experience working with Aaron Sorkin and embodying the character and the life of Lucille Ball and the pressure with that. So that was a real, and that was just before Christmas we went to see that. So that was a nice mm-hmm. way to kind of wrap up the year with an awesome Q&A with Nicole Kidman. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and the movie was pretty awesome too. Yeah. yeah. Have, Have you guys, guys seen that one? I haven't. It's on. Uh, what is it on Amazon Prime or yeah, something yeah. right now? I think it's it's on my list. Um, those lists are growing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I will watch it eventually and I'll probably watch it pretty quickly here. That's definitely one that's at the top that I want to see. Yeah, I'm I think glad everyone. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, everyone's talking about Nicole Kidman's performance, but I actually my favorite from the film was actually Javier Bardem as Desi Arnaz. Yep. He was incredible. He's so good. Yep. So good. Yeah, yeah. I can't, that's definitely on, on the top of my list, too. My uh, sister Janice, big shout out to Janice, is a gigantic Lucille Ball fan. She has a beautiful tattoo of her wedding, uh, on her wedding day, on her forearm that this artist did at a convention. So I want to make sure that uh, she's here when, when I watch it so we can both get the reaction from Amazing. it. That's definitely- and Lee, you kind of slid it in there, but I do want to say that Taika Waititi and Rita Ora are, are one of my favorite Hollywood couples right now. Yeah, you can, you can tell he's so in love with her. So cute. And obviously she's amazing, but I... I saw on a red carpet not too long ago, like he was like, he picked up a camera and was like taking pictures of her and all this stuff. One of my favorite couples in Hollywood right now. And neither of them are from Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually just finally yeah. saw free guy the other night and he's in that, like not yeah. one of his, you know, I mean, he, he plays a really good dickhead in, in, yeah. in the movie. I will say that. So what did you think We're of actually- free guy? I really enjoyed it, to be honest with you. I'm kind of upset that I didn't see it in theaters last year. You know, it was not on my radar. I think we may have mentioned it in our 2021 movie preview. But um, it was supposed to come out in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was one of the COVID movies that we talked about that's been pushed back forever. Uh, Ryan and I just got done doing our 2022 movie preview. And I swear half those films were supposed to come out last year, the year before. Yeah. (laughs) So hopefully it happens this year, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's, it it was just a, just a smart, clever film, uh, to be honest with you. I enjoyed the performances. Like I said, I I thought Taika played a really good, uh, CEO devilish, uh, kind of type. I'm a rule breaker. I'm a rattle chicka 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 snake. And uh, Ryan Reynolds was great as always, as, as well as the rest of the supporting cast too. I can't think of the gentleman's name, but his his uh, uh, black friend, the one that's the security guard, uh, he's just hysterical. And yeah, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. What did you two think about it? Uh, I think we discussed. I wasn't a fan of Taika Waititi's uh, character, to be honest. Mm-hmm. He seemed felt- to be in a different movie to everybody else. Like yeah. his energy yeah. was a whole other level. Which is fine normally, but I don't know. He, he didn't quite gel with the whole vibe of the film. But I love Ryan Reynolds, you know. Yeah, but it pains me to say that know. about Taika Waititi because right. I love him. I love right. everything he does. But, yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't love him in that film, to be honest. Yeah, he was such a dick. Hey, this! And, and speaking of, one, one person <laughs> I never thought I wouldn't like 
I just started watching The Shrink Next Door on Apple TV mm. with uh, Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell. And Paul Rudd, I never thought I would ever dislike the guy. He's got yeah. me feeling like when I saw Joaquin Phoenix in Gladiator. It's like, man, yeah. what an ass. Like, Paul, Paul. I yeah. mean, but he, obviously, it's it's a good acting job because yeah. you you start to hate him. So. And that was based on a true story. Yeah. I couldn't get over that. It's crazy. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's insane, especially just with these these shows coming out now, mm. Tinder Swindler and then Inventing Anna. Just uh, you know, people trying to make a buck, but uh not not doing it uh I guess you could say the the correct way. Not, not the yeah. uh I don't want to say logical, but uh, yeah, yeah, either way. Have you guys <laughs> watched have you guys watched Inventing Anna? I have, yeah. Tim we watched it. I started it yesterday. Weirdly that we're talking about it. I'm about okay. 15 minutes in, so I can't really comment too much. <laughs> I will tell you this, Tim, this is, it, it is not a show that I had on my radar or that even when, you know, cause Netflix does a really good job of promoting the shows they want you to watch. So when you turn it on and it's new, they'll have it all over the place. So anyways, my girlfriend, Courtney, I, we, one Saturday morning, we had gone out the night before, so, you know, I was a little groggy waking up. And she was maybe, like, in the second episode, I think there's, what, nine of them? We watched, I, I woke up, I started getting engaged almost immediately. We watched all nine episodes that day. Wow. And I'd say about seven episodes in, six episodes in, I'm on my phone, like, reading the articles that were originally yeah. written. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, I am fascinated by the whole thing. It's fascinating to me how so many people could be so dumb. (laughs) Yeah. Especially like these affluent people, you know what I mean? Who there's always, when you're rich, there always has to be people that are trying to get things from you. So the fact that these people's radar was, they weren't, they were unable to kind of, sense this from this person i don't know it's fascinating great show i would handing encourage up, handing over their credit cards to someone yes. they've known for like five minutes you right. know? yes right the arrogance of it though like you know here you go go pick up our lunch here's my credit card like yeah come on yeah, yeah it's a great great show See how well i better block out the rest of my <laughs> Sunday by the sounds of it if i'm gonna put it back on after this I might it's, have it's to- amazing tim and obviously so I'm almost ashamed to admit this, but I have not seen Ozark. I will watch Ozark at some point. And obviously the the gal that plays Anna, she does like a Southern accent on Ozark. And obviously mm. it sounds like the accent she does on Ozark is very authentic. All right, listen, motherfuckers. If you deviate from the plan, I'll take a dull fucking blade and cut y'all. But like they, the 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 people I was watching these interviews and the people that the actual real people that were involved in this whole scam said that she like got Anna's accent like spot on. Yeah, they heard She's her really talking. Good. Yeah, and it's her voice is really annoying. <laughs> I will say that too. Like I don't know if I could be friends with that person just based on how annoying their voice was. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. neither here nor there. Why are you being so dramatic? <laughs> Bank fuck up. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what are you wearing? You look poor. Hey, yes. That, that's why do you have the, the Do you have the script in front of you? <laughs> no. I've just, <laughs> I've just seen that clip so much, you know. It's a meme now. What oh, are you yeah. wearing? You look poor. Hide the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs> <laughs> like what is even her accent her accent is so strange it's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's yeah. like a russian slash german mm-hmm. slash i don't i don't even know i don't even English, know what american else. yeah maybe yeah well they, they when i read up on it when i read up on it they did say that she changed her accent depending on who she was speaking with so that you know julia garner who's the actress she got a bit of crap in the beginning because they were like what accent are you doing but apparently that's what the real chick did like she would change how she spoke for who she was speaking with she was just a chameleon wow yeah, yeah. And the accent in the show or you just accept it does it's anyone talk jarring. about it? it it's a bit jarring it, it is, is a bit jarring to listen to because you're like what is what is she going on about what is how is she talking but and the crazy thing is she's famous now like she's famous and these clout chasing 
other like famous people that are, that that try to use other people to become famous, they they latch on to them. I'll I will use um uncut gems. She was just she just dated Kanye. Um uh, uh Julia Fox. Mm. Julia Fox, she was in mm. Uncut, uncut Gems. Right. I saw today there she's she was she was dating Kanye for a couple of weeks, did a couple of photo shoots, decided that wasn't working anymore. So now she's off doing something else. I saw today that her and Anna are doing some kind of collaboration together. Oh my God. It's 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 it, it is mind blowing to me how this person is famous. There's all <laughs> kinds of ethical questions there as well. You know, like criminals yes. when they get they sell their story on death yes. row or something and you think, oh, should you really be profiting off this crap? profiting <laughs> off a crime? Oh, and by the way, using that money to pay lawyers to get you off uh, out of trouble. Yeah. Like that's the other that's the other side of it, too. And I mean, the whole thing. Yeah, I agree. It's fascinating, Tim. You got to watch it. Oh, yeah. Good night. God bless. God bless America and get home safe. <laughs> Guys, I'm done here. I'm just going to go and uh, <laughs> on watch inventing right Anna. He's putting it on right now on the other screen. This turned into the inventing, the inventing Anna. Uh, yeah, I've got one eye. One eye on the show, one eye on you guys. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to steer the conversation back to um, premieres because there's yeah. one that we're going to next week that yes. I'm dying to get your opinions on, guys. Um, so we're going to go see the Batman early next week. Ooh. I'd love to know what you guys are, your expectations I'm, I'm are of that film. Super jealous. I, I would love to fly down there and go with y'all. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, like a lot of people, when I heard the casting, I was kind of like, eh, but I also did the same thing when they casted Heath Ledger as the Joker. Mm. And then obviously, you know, one yeah, of the he was amazing. God. performances as time went on though, because I do like Robert Pattinson as an actor. A lot of people, they just think twilight. You know, unfortunately, when he's done so many amazing performances from good, especially the A24 films, Good Times, uh, The Lighthouse, him and Willem Dafoe were just brilliant in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. It just looks dark. It looks edgy. It looks like a, you know, it's almost set up to be a murder mystery type of film, which we really haven't seen in the Batman series. So I am super pumped. I went ahead and got my tickets for Thursday night and can't wait. Because Batman's meant to be. Uh, the world's greatest detective. Correct. So I totally agree with you, Brian. It seems like we are finally getting that detective Batman for the very first time, which is crazy to think that yeah. it's taken this long. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. The, we talked about this actually last week, so I don't even know if we've aired that episode yet. So we're going to get a little bit of, yeah. there's a little bit of a sneak peek. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I like the dark edginess of it. They're even taking it a step further. I think, Obviously, the, um, you know, the 80s, the the Michael Keaton version was dark and Batman's always supposed to be dark. And then I think uh, Christopher Nolan took a step forward with, uh, you know, the Christian Bale iteration. This is even a step beyond that. Um, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to that I really like about this is the director, uh, Matt Reeves, just kind of talked about how we've seen the origin story a hundred mm -hmm. times. So they're not going to waste time doing the origin story. They're really just going to kind of drop you into this world that's already happening. Look, I don't know. I don't know about Robert Pattinson. We'll see. I'm not, I'm going to give him a chance. I certainly very looking forward to, you know, Zoe Kravitz as the Selena Kyle character. I think Paul Dano and what they're going to do with the Riddler is, very, um, you know, Heath Ledger-esque where you have this, I mean, I think it's always assumed, right, that these characters in the comic books are serial killers, right? But yeah, they're unstable. They don't, they don't, they yeah. don't portray them like that. And they really did portray Heath Ledger's iteration of the Joker like that. There, I think this Paul Dano, you know, character with the Riddler is going to be amazing. And I think he's going to mm. be scary and terrifying. There's going to be a little bit of suspense and it's going to be thrilling. And uh, Tim, just to your point, it's going to be less about the toys with this version of Batman and more about his brain and how he's able to be a detective and kind of hunt down the bad guys with his prowess. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped. Uh, it's, it's probably not one of the top three superhero movies that I'm looking forward to this year, but if it's, it's probably number four on that list. 
Well, there's about I'm, 500 coming out this year. That's true. Hero, so. <laughs> yes. I'm not sold on the runtime. So I'm still Is it not three hours. It, yeah, I'm not convinced oh. it needs to be three hours. I haven't yeah. seen it, but I'm not convinced it needs to be. Very few films need to be that length. So couldn't agree we'll more. The, the reports so far have been saying that Jeffrey Wright, who plays Commissioner Gordon in the movie, does a fantastic job. Oh, thing. can't wait for and him. I, yeah. him. And Andy Serkis is Alfred. Yep. That is great. I mean, yeah. you know, Jeffrey Wright, Andy, they got a great cast. Let, let, let's, yeah. let's, you know, Colin Farrell is the penguin. Like, they got a great cast. It's funny that the one question marks the main character. So, <laughs> you know, we'll see. I think Robert Pattinson will do a good job. Um, I think yeah. he'll do fine because he's, he, you know, if you think about some of the, some of the components that he's known for as, you know, Edward in, in the Twilight series, kind of dark and brooding mm. and, and tormented in a way. And, uh, you know, I think he can bring that to this Bruce, to this version of Bruce Wayne. I think it'll be seamless. I think you'll see a lot of what you saw in the, in that film series, uh, uh, you know, little bits and pieces of that with this. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Now for for this premiere, uh, is this one in Sydney as well? Is that where the majority of the premieres are that, that yeah. you can go to? Okay. Yeah. Sydney's yeah. Uh, our LA. Gotcha. It needs our ally. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of venues across the city um, that we kind of dance around. Okay. There's a few that, you know, house the bigger, you know, red carpet sort of uh, activation things, you know, yeah. like Fast that's at, Nine. That's at, that's at Fox Studios. Fox Studios. Um, nice. Yeah, Hoyt's Entertainment Quarter, which is, it, it was a big place for our movie making back in the day and it kind of fell into disuse, didn't it? Like, does it get used yeah. much anymore? They, I mean, the oh, films, yeah. the Star Wars films there and and the Superman reboot, I think, with, was it Brandon Ruth in it? Yeah. No, it's That's definitely cool. up and running because Marvel are filming all their films out of Fox Studios. That's right. Thor, so Thor, yeah, Love, and Thor Thunder, Love and Thunder. And, yeah. 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 I think they also did the, the latest Matrix there too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they least, did the sequels. Yeah. They did yeah. the they yeah. did the sequels back in the early noughties, but they mm-hmm. filmed Matrix Resurrections in San Francisco, I feel. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's yeah. the first time I've heard that, and I love it. You called them the naughties. Oh, really? You've never called them the or heard no, them we did, called we, the naughties? I, I guess maybe that maybe that's an Australian thing. I don't know. We call, we just call them the the aughts, right? Oh the yeah, aughts. okay. Yeah. Yeah, we call them the aughts. So you call them the naughties. Yeah, because <laughs> naught, because we say no, naught for zero. I <laughs> like it. No, I like it. I'm not, that's there's awesome. no, I like it. I'm using yeah. it. It's done. That's the first cool. time I've heard it. That's fantastic. See, we learn something new every day. We got to, we got to have you on that's more right. often. Yeah. <laughs> when we're not having technical podcast. difficulties or battling yeah. COVID. <laughs> um, one of the locations, though, that we had West Side Story last year was this beautiful theater called the state theater in sydney and it's it's gorgeous it's got ornate like staircases and it's how would you describe it tim it's just a beautiful beautiful location it was really fitting for west side story think think the opera house in paris think phantom of the opera it's got that decadent sort of inside uh, design if you will marble staircases and gold everywhere it's stunning beautiful like bus statues and yeah it's it's beautiful it's a busty venue (laughs) <laughs> we like busty <laughs> venues. <Yeah. laughs> so in, in terms of uh, upcoming interviews and other red carpet events besides the Batman, mm. what do you two have coming up? Oh, now we can, when, when's this, when's this coming out? Whatever you can talk about. <laughs> well, when's this um, coming out? We might have some stuff we can talk about. Yeah, I got you. It'll, it'll probably be not this uh, week coming up. It'll be the week after. Oh, okay. Well, we could probably talk about um, the bad guys. Yeah. Bad Guys is, are you familiar with the books, The Bad Guys over in the US? It's, it's more of a kid's book. Yeah, series. it's the animated film, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's you got Mr. Snake, Mr. Shark, mm-hmm. Mr. Tarantula, you know, all those kind of characters. Anyway, we sat down with um, Mark Maron, Aquafina, Craig Robinson, oh, man. Wow. and um, Anthony Ramos to talk about that film. So that'll be coming out in a few weeks. Very exciting. That's yeah. awesome. I love Mark It's a good Maron. film. It's a good film too. DreamWorks Animation. It's yeah. really, really fun film. Wow. Nice, nice. I tell you, I, I love your Instagram feed, which, by the way, Popcorn Podcast, for you listening out yeah. there, go check it out. Because, I mean, between the red carpets and the interview snippets and then listening to your podcast, I mean, it's uh, it's amazing. Uh, I got to say, my hat's off to both of you for the interviews that you get, the red carpet stuff. It just looks amazing. 
And it's out. I have to I have to keep my likes under control because I don't want you guys to think that I'm like some weirdo that's just like liking everything, right. you know. So I'm like, okay, I think you know, okay, there, that's one. I haven't liked one in a couple of days. Yeah, I love the feed. I will it's say awesome. you two are the few too, because normally, obviously, we get those notifications like you know, so and so is going live or so and so is posting. When I see popcorn mm. podcasts come up. I pretty much, within reason, drop whatever I'm doing, and I'm like, okay, let me Aww. see what these two are up to. <laughs> so keep That's it up. So sweet, thank That's you. That's so kind. Well, we'll keep yeah. the uh, we'll keep the red carpet content coming. Where we've yeah. got we've got a really funny uh, fun idea. Well, Lee Lee came up with this idea on how to you know what we're going to do on the red carpet of the Batman premiere. So watch out for yeah. that. <laughs> watch out oh, for that. Oh gosh, looking really forward to it. When when is that for you guys? Tuesday, Tuesday night, so oh, it'll wow. be okay. your... Monday. So in Monday. two days, yeah, okay. oh yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. see you on Monday. Well, yeah. we will um, definitely be looking forward to that. Another thing that we're covering at the moment that might be relevant for you guys is um, South by Southwest. We're doing oh, that yeah. remotely, yeah. so there's there's quite a lot of um, sort of lesser known films, I guess, and they've got headliners too, like uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. You know, the Nicolas Cage yep. one. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that look batshit crazy? He <laughs> plays himself, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fictitious yeah. version of himself. Yeah. Well, then he plays himself, right? Yeah, because he, he's just a fi- he's a fiction character. Yeah, page. he's no. an enigma. Yes. Yeah. No, that's that's one. What else? What else is going on at South by Southwest? Because I know it's Texas, but you know things are loosening up here. I'm not really sure, but like these events that have been planned obviously aren't catching mm-hmm. up to like um like loosened up you know um restrictions and all that Mm. because of covid so what else is going on there at south by southwest i think there are a lot of opportunities to watch films online this year still which is really good i don't think they've done much of that previously um some other films are the lost city with uh sandra bullock and channing tatum and daniel redcliffe that looks like a fun sort of action adventure film it does look fun and and probably one of the greatest cameos well I hope it's more than a cameo from Brad Pitt you'd have seen in the trailer him showing up and you know kicking ass so. my dad he's my becoming... dad my dad was the weatherman or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah he's becoming the king of cameos isn't he when you think about his Deadpool cameo and like just he's just popping up in all these random films he's like little Wayne back in the day when just doing all the cameos on songs this is Brad Pitt that's what he's doing right now yeah. he's doing it in all the movies <laughs> yeah I don't think he's going to be in it for very long I'm sure he's going to suffer a terrible death or something just like, like in deadpool too right? yeah i reckon yeah. yeah um what else is coming south by southwest there's a great documentary by an australian director called still working nine to five which covers um the sort of 40 year anniversary of 40 years 40 yeah 40 year anniversary yeah. of um work of nine to five you know with dolly parton yeah. and, and lily tomlin and, and jane fonda um and it's all about you know women's rights and in the workplace and how things have evolved and how the pandemic sort of set it back. And it's all very, it's all very fascinating. I recommend that one. Excellent. Well, cause I'd seen the film as in nine to five, which came out in 1980, but I didn't realize the cultural impact that it had at the time with the, with the women's mm-hmm. movement and feminism. And then this documentary really lifts the curtain for me to be educated on why it was so important and, and, and the message it was trying to tell back in 1980 and then how off the back of the Me Too movement that the, the Broadway musical, West End musical, and it's now playing in Sydney, nine to five mm-hmm. musical at the moment, that it, it is still so, uh, it's so important, this message and what these women deal with in the workplace, um, you know, 40 years on, which is shocking <laughs> that it's still mm-hmm. happening 40 years on and it hasn't yeah. seemed to have gotten better, but it's important that we uh, are exposed to that and we learn from it and listen. And also over there in the US, the Equal Rights Amendment still hasn't been ratified. Right. Like after all these years, it's been going for years and years and years, decades. They've been trying to get it ratified and apparently the deadline passed and not all, mm. they haven't got enough states on board and it, it's ridiculous. This just sucks! Or a mess. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no other way to put it. It's, it's, uh, I, I don't even want to get into it, but yeah, it's. It's all over the place over here. Yeah. Everybody love everybody. Just like stay uh, away from Jackie politics Moon. and religion. That's <laughs> yep. it. Yep. That's it. But yeah, well, yeah so there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of fascinating stuff to watch at South by Southwest. I think it kicks off from March 11. So yeah, check it out. Nice. Are, well, because d- we, does it does it seem like they're gonna have a big in person? I mean, are you getting the sense that they're people are gonna be back this year? They're really pushing for it. Yeah. Whether it happens or not, I'm not sure. That, well, that whole, whole festival, 
Yes. Because they've got music artists like Lizzo, I think, is playing as well. So there's more than just the films. It's the whole, you know, all the events that they've got on as well. So they, they are really pushing it. Yeah. You know, attending South by Southwest has sort of been a bucket list item for me for, for a while. Dang. And it's not only, you know, it goes on for like a month. Right. And it's there's like a, there's like a film section. There's like, a, you know, a, a, a music section. When I say section, there's like a, a time in the in mm. the agenda. There's like art there's mm-hmm. all kinds of things that are going on and it's and there's, a lot of, there's a big business and tech side as well sure yeah Watch and that. obviously it's in a very cool place in austin texas so uh you got a lot of just a lot of great things definitely a bucket list item for me so yeah i'm i'm interested to hear you know after the fact as you guys are able to kind of be a part of it um you know your uh you know your 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 perceptions of everything and how how it goes and those types of things we should plan on a 2023 field trip popcorn podcast zero dark nerdy hitting up austin yeah west yeah (laughs) i've never never been to austin but i have never heard a single person say anything bad about austin texas yeah between the food the music the culture it's definitely a bucket list city as well as south by southwest just being a bucket list of that Right, you know, put it I on the vision it. board, guys. Um, these are some images that I find inspirational. <laughs> 2023, you're a dark nerdy popcorn podcast. Take I'm, on. Making, I'm making a <laughs> note. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know what? I just love to go anywhere. Just let me go somewhere, <laughs> please. Yes. Travel. Oh, I miss it. I oh, miss crap. it. Hopefully by then things will have hopefully gone back to normal. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah. 